Convexification is an important technique in optimization. Because convex sets are usually easier to work with, when we are given a set, we look at its convex hull. So if S is a subset of Rn, the convex hull of S, denoted conv of S, is the intersection of all the convex sets containing S. Let's look at an example. Suppose that S is given by this. Since S is in two dimensions, we can sketch S on the two-dimensional plane. And it's not too difficult to see that this defines the unit circle. So what would be the convex hull of S? Well, we need to take a look at all the convex sets containing S. In any particular convex set that contains the unit circle, it also has to contain the line segment between any two points on the circle. If you take a chord of the circle, any convex set that contains the unit circle will have to contain this chord. And so any convex set will have to contain all the chords of the circle. That means any convex set must contain the unit disk. But the unit disk itself is a convex set that contains S. So the convex hull of S cannot be anything smaller than this unit disk. And so the convex hull of S is the unit disk. Working with this definition doesn't seem to be very simple. So we're now going to look at an algebraic way of obtaining the convex hull of S. First, we need the notion of a convex combination. Let V1 up to VK be elements of Rn. And let lambda1 up to lambda k be non-negative real numbers such that lambda1 plus all the way up to lambda k is equal to 1. Then lambda1 times v1 plus all the way to lambda k times vk is called a convex combination of v1 up to vk. There's a fact that can be easy to show by induction. If c, a subset of Rn, is convex, and if v1 up to vk are in c, then c contains all convex combinations of v1 up to vk. What we are now going to look at is that the convex hull of S is given by all the possible convex combination of elements of S. To be more precise, the convex hull of S is equal to Q, where Q is defined as follows. So Q is all the possible convex combination of points from S. We're now going to look at a sketch of the proof. It's clear that the convex hull of S contains Q because the convex hull of S is a convex set. And if you take V1 up to VK from S, then any convex set containing S must also contain all possible convex combinations of V1 up to VK. Now, to complete the proof, it suffices to show that Q is convex. The reason is that Q contains S, and we have already established that any convex set containing S must contain Q. So if Q is also convex, then Q must be the smallest convex set containing S, and so Q is equal to the convex hull of S. To show that Q is convex, let U and V be from Q. By the definition of Q, there exists alpha 1 up to alpha KU, beta 1 up to beta KV, U1 up to UKU in S, and V1 up to VKV in S, such that all the alphas and betas are non-negative. The sum of the alphas is 1. And the sum of the betas is also 1. And u is given by alpha 1 times u1 all the way to alpha ku times uku. And v is given by beta 1 v1 plus all the way to beta kv vkv. So we want to show that the line segment between u and v is contained in q. Now, if we take z to be from the line segment between u and v, then we can write z as 1 minus lambda times u plus lambda times v. And we want to show that z is also in q. From this point on, it's just a matter of algebra. So z can be written as this expression here. And one observes that all these coefficients 1 minus lambda times alpha i and lambda times beta i are all non-negative. So the final step is actually to show that the sum of all these coefficients is 1. 
we have established that Z can be written as the convex combination of elements of S. And so Z is going to be in Q. And that completes the proof.